So I'm, I'm, my background is applied mathematics and computer science. I also recently became a father and uh, I'm CEO of Epsilon Data Science. As a company, we uh, specialize in delivering data products and, and building them for enterprise that typically involves nowadays uh, some machine learning work as well. Uh, more than half of our work is done with R and one of our core competencies is uh, building decision support systems with Shiny. Uh, this is just one example of our recent work. Uh, it's a 100% Shiny dashboard for R package called Quantida. It's an excellent NLP package. And the dashboard itself was developed for Ken Benoit, uh, who's a professor at the LSE, London School of Economics. And even though that tool itself is very powerful, this is not the most advanced dashboard that we've built. Uh, we uh, support ourselves with uh, our shiny packages, and I have some hex stickers with me, so I encourage you to try the dashboard, and if you like it, come get hex sticker as well. And uh, thanks to our experience both in mathematics and engineering, uh, we successfully uh, deliver data products uh, for some Fortune 500 companies. And uh, before I will give you my lessons, our lessons as a, as a company, uh, I want to ask a very important question first, which is, why shiny? And this question should be asked for every technology we use. And shiny is no different. Uh, there is a sweet spot of projects that shiny is a perfect choice. And to find that sweet spot, we need to look at the alternatives. I remember very well when I won our first project with a Fortune 500 company. And it was just after the meeting when uh, at the video call they shown a PowerPoint slide with an idea of a data tool that they've wanted to create. And I've worked in the evening and in 24 hours, I've sent them an MVP of that application. It was done fully in Shiny and up to this day, I, I cannot think of any other framework that possibly can get me these results that fast. Um, when, compare, when we compare Shiny to spreadsheets, uh, you get a lot of benefits. Uh, definitely more beautiful UI, automation, you can run jobs in the background, uh, you get the scale, uh, you get uh, shared resources, uh, you get uh, source code, and thanks to that, you get tests. You can verify that the tool is still correct. Uh, so that's great. And the source code itself is also a huge benefit over BI tools we use. Uh, you uh, you get the potential to fully customize your work. Uh, you get much less uh, running fees as well, and uh, much more machine learning possibilities with R. Um, so if you take a look at that, it seems like whenever you need a data product is more complex than a spreadsheet or a BI dashboard. And at the same time, you're just not 100% sure about the scope of the tool and you need to prototype fast and change requirements, Shiny is a perfect choice. And that proved to be true for us. Uh, so now when we, let's say, agree that we want to use Shiny, uh, I, want to, uh, I want to ask you to think about one shiny tool, shiny product that you want to develop, or maybe perhaps an existing one, 
and we are going to go together and deploy the app to the users in production in an enterprise environment. So the first lesson is a really simple one. Don't overspend it. Creating a tool uh, that you want to deliver to a large number of people is going to be a big project. So instead, start with a small group of folks who are willing to help you, that are going to use the tool itself, and continue to work with them until you get to the point that they are keen on to recommend the tool to their peers. Once you get there, you can go all in. Uh, but this is really crucial uh, because if you build a tool without speaking directly with the uh, stakeholders, your, your users, uh, you are going to build something that's not useful, you will not have buy-in from the user, and basically you will, you will create a huge project uh, that is not useful in the organization, and which was quite expensive. Second lesson, good architecture. Architecture can be, when done well, uh, can bring joy to our life and uh, also simplify our lives. Same with uh, code. If we use modules to separate the logic to smaller independent parts, this allows us to maintain the code more easily and also to verify correctness of the module. You can extract business logic and run tests to verify the business logic is correct. You can extract heavy computation. This can be done as a future or a REST API, or maybe even you can pre-calculate uh, pre the values uh, before running the app. And last but not least, uh, you can also load the data from the database. If you load data to your Shiny app, uh, on the server, or even worse, if you load the uh, data for each session of a user, uh, yeah, that's, that's not the way to go if you want to scale. Third lesson, tests. So ideally, uh, we want to uh, have a right mix of tests. I've seen engineers, but also business folks, having love-hate relationship with tests. They love to have them, but they hate to create them. And uh, yeah, uh, the, the, the key here is understanding that tests pay off when done well. So you need to have the, the, the largest group is having very simple unit tests that verifies only basic concepts of the logic, and then less and less of more complex tests until you get to the point of just a few end-to-end -end tests. This allows you to minimize the time needed for manual testing. Sadly, this is not yet a standard for Shiny apps. What we see more is an anti-pattern anti called test cone, where we have a few, uh, just, just few unit tests and more and more end-to-end -end tests. Why is bad? Because to run a single end-to-end -end test, you need a lot of time, much more than for a unit test. So if you have many end-to-end -end tests, developers tend to skip the tests, and then they write less of them, none of them. And that's the easiest way to introduce bugs. And of course, we don't want bugs in production. The less we get, the better. But you don't only need to validate the logic and the source code. You also need to validate the data. So how do we validate the data? We set rules, predicates, to validate that. I'll get more in, uh, into that on the following slides. Uh, but also you set an owner for each data set. So whenever that data is not, no longer valid, this person is responsible for learning what happened, how to avoid it in the future, and 
fixing the problem. Uh, but that's not only that. You also need to have a logging infrastructure. I've seen uh, one talk about Shiny uh, today about log logs. And you want to gather uh, both errors, but also good uses of your app to analyze further. Uh, and potentially even build new data products in the future. And you also want to make your app fault tolerant so that if an API you use uh, breaks, goes down, the app is still useful to the extent possible. We don't want business folks to go through an R stack uh, in their browsers. So just a four quick tips here as well. Uh, you can set up a daily data validation email to a data owner. Uh, you, or, or text them if something happens. You can set up uh, continuous integration to run tests for your logic and uh, also for, uh, for, for style of code. Uh, you can use linter for that. And uh, sometimes uh, it also makes sense to show the data status directly in the app for, for the end users on, to, to notify them on what data they work on. Back to the data rules. We are quite paranoid about the data quality at Epsilon, so we even identified the different types of problems that can happen to the data. And uh, there are some simple ones, more complex ones. I recommend you to, if you're interested, to go through the post by Pavel uh, on our blog post. Uh, and, and there, he goes deep into some crazy stuff that can happen. But uh, trust me, with those data validation rules, we saved our customers from some serious trouble. OK, uh, so the app is up and running. And uh, we want to go all in. It's well tested. Uh, typically, you want to run the uh, Shiny app for uh, using many processes but uh, quite often also using multiple servers. So you can use uh, AWS for that. Uh, to run on multiple processes, you can use RStudio Connect, for example. And once you have the setup, you need to run performance tests. So that was a question to the previous talk. Let's dive into it. Uh, so here's an existing setup for one of our work. You see at the middle the load balancer. So that's more or less the same as on the previous uh, presentation. Below, there's, uh, there are servers with RStudio Connect running the app that speak with the database. At the, at the top, you see a master node, uh, which is responsible for performing the tests. And to make it even more sweet, we have a R script that gathers the log and creates a report for us from the uh, performance tests. Uh, all right, automation and deployment. So we need more than one deployment environment. We, you need at least two, because one environment is only for engineers, developers working on the Shiny app, and the other is for the users that are using the app. Uh, when it's automated, uh, you can do magic with cloud resources. You can easily go back rollback, you can easily trash or create new instance of your app. So it seems like uh, we, uh, we get to the point where Shiny is uh, much more than just beautiful user interface and machine learning model inside. We get a list of engineering tasks that need to be done to make the app really useful and ready for production in an enterprise environment. But the good news is it's all possible with R, and we can deploy such apps in Shiny. And uh, oh, the coffee doesn't work. Uh, anyway, uh, we can deploy Shiny apps in uh, very large deployments for hundreds of, hundreds of users, whole departments and we can make them bulletproof as well. I'm happy to answer your question. I hope some insights are going to be useful for you, and uh, 
If not now, then um, I'm happy to chat during the break. Thank you, Philip. Any question? Thank you for the talk, really interesting. Um, it was super cool for me to see someone talking about style checks. Uh, it's something we are not currently doing, but I really want to do it, uh, not just for Shiner, but just in general. And I was wondering, where do you guys do it? Do you have, like we use Jenkins, for example. Is this something you do in Jenkins with the hook for GitHub? Um, what is your suggestion? All right, thanks for the question. So. Uh, Typically, we do it uh, in, in several moments. So you, you can do it in your IDE. That's a really simple uh, solution. But then you also need to make sure that the code doesn't get to the master or, or develop and so on. So you want to have the same checks on your continuous integration. So you can do it in Jenkins, in any other continuous integration tool you use. But it's important to set those checks in many places, like pre Prehook uh, in your Git configuration, continuous integration, and so on. Yeah. Okay. I want to congratulate you a great presentation, and I have question about testing. Uh, with previous project, uh, I struggled a lot with uh, making tests. And especially uh, integration tests uh, seems hard to me. And my question is, what's your approach to integration tests? Mm -hmm. uh, so, so we have an internal solution. Uh, we currently are in the process of discussing if we open source it or not. But basically, we can run each Shiny module as an independent component and test it. So we test on a component module. And in terms of integration tests, uh, so, so that was an answer for component tests. For integration tests, mm -hmm. uh, the, the setup is similar to unit tests, but we just uh, check the, the larger chunks of business logic. Mm -hmm. But to do it, we need the definition of these big chunks, yes? And it needs to be uh, up to date always. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's something you need to agree with the rest of the team, uh, I suppose. Uh, because, you know, in Shiny, we don't have a standard. Like, the framework doesn't define how we develop the apps. And, and now we have, uh, you know, new frameworks coming in. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I believe that the trend is going to be that there are multiple ways to write the app. And depending on what you agree as a, as a group of engineers, then the definition of what an integration test is mm -hmm. might differ. OK, thank you. And maybe one more about uh, front-end test. I, I want only to ask if you use uh, R Selenium or something else. I believe we use Puppeteer. Uh, but even though I'm uh, like I, I'm technical person, I no longer work on directly on the project, so I okay, can okay. pass the question to my team and answer okay. on Twitter. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you, Philip. Thank you. If you have other question, you can meet Philip after.